Okay, hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining us um, in person and online. Um, as you know, this is our every third Friday of the month series that we're doing here at UC Fresno, and I'm part of UC Berkeley School of Law's business practicum, and I'm here joined today with my colleague Gerardo, and he will be playing an ever convincing role of Walt Disney, and we'll be introducing you to how Walt Disney was introduced to IP, and basically this is like obviously accurate, so you're going to enjoy it. Um, it's going to be 15 minutes or less, as is our usual 15 minutes series, and then we'll be following it up with a trade secret presentation. So we're going to start off back in the day. All right, Mr. Disney. I hope you're enjoying that water because my boss has this cut off until you pay your tab. Damn, that's it? I'm through with cartooning. Better go work on the dock where I can actually make some money. Wait. You, you do cartooning? Are you Disney as in Walt Disney? The creator of Steamboat Willie? Yeah, but look where it got me. I can't even pay my bar tab. Oh my gosh, but those cartoons are awesome. Like, my nephews love it. I mean, I'm sure you can sell that work. Well, I can get my cartoons in the theater sometimes, but it's like a one-time thing. I'm not making concurrent money. Let me tell you, I have a friend, a little patron over there who's the usual customer of mine, and he might be able to sell your work. I think, you know, he sales, and he could put it in like a notebook pad, maybe a pencil set. You think he'll pay for that? I mean, sure. I mean, why, why wouldn't he? He can make a lot of money out of that. He's pretty savvy. But how would we set that up? I'm not a lawyer. I mean, you don't have to be a lawyer to set up a contract like that. Um, you know, I think he can sell a bunch of those. Let me see if I can help you out here. I don't want to get any copyright on a steamboat Willie. I haven't filed anything. You don't need to file anything to have a copyright. You actually get an automatic protection once it's fixed in a tangible form. I mean, here, let me put this little drop down for you. Copyright protects things like art, music, books, movies, even software. And you get protection automatically once it's fixed in a tangible form. And you only need to file once you're ready to sue someone. Um, statutory damages can be available if you already register your work beforehand but you don't have to do that. And it lasts for the rest of your life, plus 70 years after. Actually, because of Disney, the future is when the law kept increasing, but back in time, <laughs> we'll pretend it was still that. And internationally, you may be protected as well. Um, there's other limits to it, like it doesn't protect facts or just ideas, you know, creations that are just in your head, so you want to fix it in a tangible form again. Um, and the Fair Use Doctrine might allow people to use it like in a parody if they're making fun of your cartoons or educationally, but otherwise, yeah, you already have a copyright on these drawings. Wow, that's teachy teen. You know, I've been thinking more about how to market my stuff. And the kids love my characters. Yeah. I got this friend, Desi, who mm -hmm. owns an amusement park. Maybe I could get someone to dress up like. Willie and his girlfriend Minnie and I'd walk around the park to drum up sales. Hey, what if I open my own amusement park? Gosh, what would I call it? Hmm. Maybe you could just call it Disneyland. No, that wouldn't work. Desi already calls this park Desiland. Uh, customers would be confused. Hmm. Well, I guess you're right to consider customer confusion because that's a big deal with intellectual property. But I mean, you can still get a federal protection with your name. Um, Desi, he could have rights, but <laughs> um, Desi's slogan or any logo that he has right now, so long as it's not federally protected, you can still go and federally trademark yourself, and he would, he would have his rights just in the contained geographic scope of where he's currently at, his Desiland, but you know, you're going to be bigger, look at your stuff, like obviously you're going to be amazing. So you can get your trademark and get it filed with the U.S. Patent and Trade Office, and you can just have the rights throughout the whole land. Aside from the little, little area that your friend Desi would have his rights to. And it lasts for as long as you're using the trademark. And you can have international rights. Um, some marks are easier to protect than others. Like since you're using your own name, you know, you can have some strong rights or whatever. But if you make up a name, it's just more fanciful. Um, other people just don't know it yet. You're the one creating the whole dictionary meaning of that name. You have a bit of protection. Wow, so you mean all I have to do is file Disneyland with the USPTO and I'll get priority on the trademark nationwide? Yeah, so like I said, then you would have it geographically where he's using it, but you can just have your rights go 
bigger, more expanding. Wow, so where did you learn all this? I go to law school part time. Nice. I mean, I'm good at mixing drinks, and I really want you to have some. Hey. And be able to pay that time. Hey, that gets me thinking. My first job was working for as a counter, you know, the Coca Cola guy. I could sell that at Disneyland and make lots of money, you know. I worked in the factory to make that stuff. The recipe is not that hard. I could make my own and call it Disney Cal. Mm -hmm. um, did you sign a non disclosure agreement when you started working for Coca Cola? Well, yeah. Well, it sounds like the ingredients, you know, they might not be too hard, but uh, sounds like they're protected through trade, trade secret. And that's something you can actually think of for using with your own stuff. Um, well, what's trade secret? Well, that's the trade secret itself, and then the non disclosure agreement. So, okay. let me see if I can bring down another. Okay. Well, the non disclosure agreements will help you protect like the rights that you have um, that you're developing. Just like Coca Cola, those ingredients are going to be protected. So, unless you were an outsider inventing ingredients that ended up tasting like Coca Cola, you cannot just make it up yourself now because you signed a non disclosure agreement when they gave you all of the ingredients to make Coca Cola. So, you're forbidden from using that. Um, and ah, here we go. Trade secret itself is something that you can use to protect yourself through IP by contract. Um, it protects confidential information like customer lists. Um, you start building your own following, and you get protection just by keeping it a secret. It's just like a secret sauce. Like if you opened up a place like called Kentucky Fried Chicken and had you know a secret fried chicken recipe, that's a trade secret, um, and it lasts for as long as it's a secret. So you don't want others to find out about it or be sneaky and give it to their friends, so you make them sign those non-disclosure agreements that you sign when you work for ASA. Okay, well, I got a question for you. I started this new motion capture process, drawing cartoons over live action movies. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, even, it's ever been done before. How do I protect that? Oh, wow. Um, it sounds like it might be good for a patent. Patent protects unique inventions, um, and you can file it, again, with the U.S. Trademark and Patent Office, that's the same place you would have gotten for your trademark name of Disneyland. It lasts for 20 years after the filing date, but unlike trade secret, you have to disclose everything for that. So if you have like a secret sauce, it's no longer so secret because you have to tell others how to do it, and then you get the protection. Um, the protection can be international, and there's other limits and details about it, and patenting can be pretty expensive, so you're going to want to make some money before you go out to get a patent. Wow, hey, you are so smart. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Maybe I should go to law school. Walt Disney, trial lawyer, senator, Supreme Court justice. Oh. Uh, hey, so are you going to make that introduction, you know, to that sales guy who might want to make this game book really in a pencil set? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go talk to him right now. And when you do your agreement with him, make sure that you guys are in a big tip for me. Hey, so if he signs this, he'll be my. Licensee. Yes. yes, my licensee. See. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, so, obviously, you wouldn't have any questions because this was an amazing presentation. <laughs> um, but seriously, if you guys have any questions, you can send them over to us now. Um, we're happy to answer them live. And we'll be starting up a trademark, uh, excuse me, a trade secret presentation next. Um, it won't be in skip form, but we're just going to go through a few slides letting you know a little more about Trade Secret. Um, and if you have any questions, you can find us on Facebook. And we're trying to get that up and growing and moving too. And we're happy to answer those too. And it's not limited to just this topic. Just make sure that you don't get too specific on your own things because everyone else could see it too. And it's not protected. You're only protected when you meet with us in person. And you can sign up for a slot with people at the at the last center um, you know we, we're here every third Friday of the month and we're happy to meet with you guys one-on-one -on -one, 40 minute sessions and just tackle your legal issues or let you know of any problems that you should think of okay so here's a primer introduction to trade secret for entrepreneurs um, oh, penny print what is trade secret um, it's a confidential and commercially valuable it's 
confidential and commercially valuable information that gives your company a competitive edge or advantage, um, kind of like KFC's secret sauce or things like Coca-Cola's recipe, um, customer list, um, methods of production, marketing strategies, pricing information. These are things that maybe an outsider might be able to see and try to gather up this information, but you want to protect it as much as possible. So other people who would have easy access to it, like new employees or contractors, um, maybe a social media consultant who comes in or any type of consultant, um, you're going to want to have them sign non-disclosure agreements. Make sure you protect your trade secrets. That is key. Uh, why haven't I heard of trade secrets as much as other forms of IP, like trademarks and copyrights and patents? It's because their protection depends on secrecy. So people aren't going around talking about what their trade secret is. And unlike patents and the other types, um, it's not publicly recognized or filed with the government. And why should you opt for trade secret protection over patent protection? Is because with patents, you're disclosing all of the information. So you do get protection for 20 years and no one else is really allowed to use it. But if you can protect yourself by keeping the the secret sauce a secret for longer than 20 years. Um, it behooves you to consider a trade secret because, you know, your protection for that intellectual property is going to go on for as long as you keep it a secret. Uh, can I license my trade secret without losing protection? Um, that depends. Disclosing a trade secret can weigh in favor of trade secret status. Um, on one hand, licensing is evidence that a trade secret is commercially valuable. On the other hand, one could argue that the fact that a trade secret holder has such proprietary information indicates that he no longer is trying to maintain secrecy. Uh, so companies must make license, licensees sign the non-disclosure agreements before granting any access to such information. Ah, keep talking about the secret sauce. It's like the popular trade secret. Um, if you have the KFC bucket. So again, other examples are the customer and supplier list. If you have somebody come into your company and they want to branch out and make their own business that's similar to yours, you want to protect that customer list because they can just steal your, your customers and give them a cheaper price and just, you know, get you out of a business. So you want to protect it by having them sign those non-disclosure agreements. You can't go on and tell them that they just can't start that other competitive business because especially in California, that's frowned upon. Uh, so marketing and advertising strategies, personal information, consumer profiles, uh, technical information like designs and patterns, um, processes and formulas. You gotta think of when McDonald's first started. Uh, everybody wasn't doing the whole station, um, the stationary stations where one person is doing the fries and the other one is doing the burgers. They were just doing one order one person themselves, so it was taking longer. And when McDonald's came out and did that, he wanted to keep it as his trade secret at first, but it was visually seen by the customers, so other people were still able to copy it. So you gotta think of what's the best way to protect that. That might have been something that could have been protected through a patent. Uh, the four elements of a trade secret. It consists of information, and it derives economic value, and it derives that value from the fact that it's a secret. Um, it's not generally known and is the subject of reasonable efforts to maintain the secrecy, such as using the NDAs, advising employees that it's a, a trade secret. You know, they might think of, like Walt Disney would have tasted the Coca-Cola and thought, hey, I know the ingredients that make up this Coca-Cola or the Dr. Pepper, um, but he doesn't know in what degrees to use the ingredients. So he needs to you know, know that it's a trade secret and why he's signing the NDA and what the NDA covers. Uh, so you want to limit access, make people use badges, passwords, and such in the company. Um, how to protect your trade secret, um, reasonable efforts. <laughs> Again, we have the NDAs, uh, put locks on doors and file cabinets, issue confidentiality reminders to employees, um, ID badges, specific procedures for visitors. And when you think of protecting the trade secrets, um, recently the iPhone 10 was released and one of the people, like the software engineers who was working on that, he brought his daughter over and she was a social media person and she started 
live streaming or YouTubing herself with the iPhone 10, and she started scrolling through it, showing the features, and he got in trouble. He had signed a non-disclosure agreement. So on the one hand, maybe having that visitor over was bad, but then also having her scroll through the phone and showing the confidential email information. That got him fired. Um, and he was a valuable asset to the company before then, but you want to protect your, protect your trade secrets even when they're released. Um, so do not discuss confidential information and provide guidelines to your workers, informing them of what information can be shared and how to protect it themselves. Thresholds. Uh, pros and cons of a trade secret. A pro is that it's an inexpensive form of IP. Um, there's no registration cost, uh, unlike a patent application that can be like $15,000 on the low end. Uh, there's perpetual protection, um, so for the life of how long you keep the secret sauce a secret. Uh, and it takes immediate effect, and um, it's not publicly disclosed like a patent, so other people just can't copy you. Um, they can, they have to go through their own amounts of efforts. But again, a con would be that with trade secrets, so long as somebody else independent, independently creates the same procedures or methods or ingredients that you're using, they can still use it because they're not copying off of you and they're not infringing on your IP by creating it themselves. So um, trade secrets are easily misappropriated because they represent nothing more than information. Uh, if, if your company has high employee mobility, it facilitates such misappropriation. You know, if you have like a turnstile of people coming in and out of your business as employees, and then somebody else is protecting something that you thought wouldn't be able to be duplicated, you wouldn't know which one of those employees went out there and gave up that information. Um, it's harder to track. Uh, since trade secrets aren't publicly recognized, Investors may mistakenly undervalue your IP or like your business itself, you know. Um, they don't see it as a tangible form of money proof or value proof. And trade secrets don't protect against reverse engineering. This is what I was saying of somebody else independently creating it or tasting um, your sauce or your drink and being able to duplicate it themselves. And it's difficult to determine and detect violations. Um, yeah, especially if your company has a lot of people leaving, you won't know which person to even track down and try to follow and figure out who may have given that information out. All right, loss of trade secret status, uh, proper means. Trade secret law does not protect personal skills, general knowledge, or really readily ascertainable information. And for that, you can think of it visually, aside from somebody going on your website, taking down your information, or like with your social media secrets, you can see how many times you post and what platforms to use. Um, so that's not protectable. And like the McDonald's thing, the customers were able to see the way they were doing the food, so that can be protected. Uh, obtaining secret from published literature, no longer secret. <laughs> um, observation of publicly available product in public use or public display. Um, going back to the literature and this one, you think of a former employee who had signed a non-disclosure agreement, if he finds something out in a magazine or something that alludes to the ingredients, um, giving the ingredients and stuff, that alludes to it, actually gives it, he's able to then use it, even though he had signed that NDA, because it's no longer a secret, but that trade secret that the NDA was protecting. Um, independent invention is not protected, and reverse engineering, which we talked about. So misappropriation, um, that's infringement either through improper means or breach of confidence. So it's a, if a former employee gave out your secrets to someone else. Um, so espionage through electronic or other means. Theft, bribery, or fraud, misrepresentation. Uh, breach of confidence goes to express agreements and implied agreements. Express agreements would be contracts keeping certain information confidential and then implied ones. Um, what alleged infringer held to have breached an implied confidential relationship um, happens when the infringer knew of its information or infringer had reason to know of the information and the trade secret holder was reasonable in inferring that the infringer 
consented to the formation. Um, I wanted to give, bring back that iPhone um, incident up again. But here, there was a reach within the relationship of the parent and then the daughter who was there. And then her maybe getting the iPhone from him could have thought that she had, she was able to give it out to other people and show the secrets otherwise. Um, she did take the fall on her own. But. Uh, so the legal landscape for trade secret protection um, they're primarily, primarily cre they're primary creatures of state law. Uh, individuals or corporations may seek civil damages in state courts by pursuing a common law court action for misappropriation or through specific state statutes. Um, California has adopted its own version of the Uniform Trade Secrets Act, and you can get the section codes through the PowerPoint. Um, this is just another slide going through once an employee is hired, you know, the confidentiality, confidentiality I'm seeing that a lot, confidentiality agreements, um, the NDAs that they need to go through, you know, just let them know what they're signing and why they're signing it and how they should be protecting the information. You, know, you want to keep showing that you're protecting that trade secret and not just showing it, doing it and having other people do it as well. Um, the employees are the big ones who can help you keep that a secret. Consider having Independent contractors also sign the confidentiality and invention assignment agreements. Uh, so you want to limit the types of customers they may work with. But let's say contractors, in a sense, are being hired for the type of business that they have. So if you're working with an independent contractor who's making websites, you can't tell them that they can't work with other people in that same capacity. So it's quite hard to get someone to agree to signing agreements like that. And this again, letting people know about their confidentiality obligation. Um, in some states, businesses can protect their trade secrets by imposing non-compete agreements and having their departing employees and contractors agree to that. Uh, again, we spoke about this earlier, that California has rules against this. Um, that non-compete business is not really gonna work with you here. So, you want to give exit interviews that remind people of the non-disclosure agreements and the confidentiality that they should be upholding for you. Prohibit personnel in a sensitive position to stay on the job for any length of time after they've given notice that they're going to be leaving the company. Um, you want to limit their access to resources at that point, especially the trade secrets or other information that they may be able to you know, maybe take out through a thumb drive or learn of new information. Um, again, you want to protect it, and it just may seem that they have no more reason to be getting that information. Um, after an employee or independent contractor gives notice, the company can monitor the email um, to determine if the worker has begun to take actions that might be indicative of misappropriation, like forwarding to an outside email or copying a whole bunch of things off of their computer and sending it to their other emails, maybe photocopying in excess or lots of use of office supplies. And that's it. <laughs> um, how do we have any other information on trade secrets that came up through the presentation? No, I think it was pretty well explained. Okay. All right, guys. So if you have any questions about trade secrets, um, shoot it to us. Do not give us any information about your trade secret then it's no longer a secret unless you meet with us in private and we have our confidential one-on-one -on -one sessions, which we're happy to do with you. And we do them for free every third Friday here in person. And we're also out at UC Berkeley Law in the Berkeley area. So find us in the East Bay or here. Thank you.